1418, Vice President Kembo Mahali has arrived. 1419, Professor Nkuk has arrived. 1420, National Assembly members have taken their seats and Speaker Advocate Jacob Mudender informs their house that Finance Minister Professor Mthul Nkuk will present the budget later on today. 1420, Virtually all MDC Alliance MPs are conspicuous by their absence ahead of 2020 National Budget Presentation. 1424. Speaker of the National Assembly Advocate Jacob Mudender advises MPs of scheduled post-budget seminar at Rainbow Towers tomorrow, and invites updates for notices of motions. 1429. Norton Independent MP Miss Will rises to complain about the absence of MDC Alliance and questions their sincerity in representing the interest of people they represent and the national interest. Miss Will suggests MDC AMPs are hypocritical for their apparent snub of the president who is expected to attend the budget presentation. Miss Will takes a jibe at MDC AMPs for bunking budget presentation despite attending the pre-budget seminar in Victoria Falls a fortnight ago to listen to some MPs appointed by the president they are snubbing. Miss Will says the MDC AMPs have taken it too far and should be punished. Baku de Shamhu in a Mew New, he says. 1436. Advocate Mudenda warns of stern measures against absecanting 2020 budget presentation saying enough is enough. 1440. President Nangakwa has arrived. 1446. MPs chant Ed V as President Nangakwa gets into Parliament. 1448. Prof Cube salutes the President and his Vice Presidents for invaluable support in ongoing economic reforms. 1451. Prof. Cube says the budget is a people's budget, whose theme is gearing for higher productivity, growth, and job creation. Austerity wasn't a retribution, national finances were in shambles and required rebalancing, he says. 1455. He says implementation of key infrastructure projects such as Huang 7 and 8, RGM International Airport are on course. Cyclone Ida left about 275,000 in need of assistance. 1459. Economic growth of up to 3% expected in 2020. 2020 national budget marks exit from austerity to prosperity, says Prof. Q. All civil servants to get bonuses in November. 1509. Grain subsidies will be removed beginning next year to avoid abuse of facilities. Transport subsidies to continue to cushion travelers. 1522. Mineral exports remain the major sources of foreign currency, especially gold. However, leakages have been on the rise, depriving the country of foreign currency earnings. Government is, therefore, reviewing and tightening the Gold Trade Act and capacitating the Gold Mobilization Unit. Growth polls will be considered on the basis of comparative advantage of the area. Local authorities have, therefore, a greater role to play in promoting this model through developing the necessary infrastructure and investment mobilization initiatives. Emphasis will be on ensuring that targeted growth poles have the necessary basic infrastructure of portable water and sanitation. The central government on its part will provide requisite fiscal incentives. 1525. The devolution program should embrace the Rural Growth Poles development model anchored by cascading special economic zones to the respective growth poles. 1526. Tourism is recognized as one of the pillars anchoring the country's economic growth. The sector has continued on a positive trajectory path as evidenced by tourist arrivals that grew from 1. 8 million in 2013 to 2.5 million in 2018. It is expected that tourist arrivals will marginally increase to 2.7 million in 2019, irrespective of the prevailing macroeconomic environment. 1527. Government has approved the concept of the new city being constructed on 18,000 hectares of land in Mount Hampton with the new parliament building as the catalyst. A modern conference centre will be budgeted under the 2020 national budget. 1529. Under the 2020 budget, a fiscal incentive is being introduced to support employers who generate jobs for our young job seekers. 
Any additional job created will attract a percentage tax rebate to the employer, linked to the employee's salary. This measure will reduce the employer's cost of hiring young people through a cost-sharing mechanism with government. 1531. Investment in infrastructure development plays an important part in job creation. Job opportunities will be created through investments in roads, water, energy, construction, it and social sectors infrastructure. It is with this view in mind I have allocated $2.6 billion for infrastructure development under this budget. 1534. In 2020, the budget provides for capitalization of the following institutions, which support various MSMEs projects. Dash Women Development Fund, $20 million. Dash Community Development Fund, $15 million. Dot Dash Zimbabwe Women Microfinance Bank, $100 million. Dash Smedco, $90 million. Dash Empower Bank, $50 million. 1535. Innovation, which is integral for growth and better job creation is lacking protection, and hence suppressed in its infancy. A number of micro, small and medium enterprises MSMEs, comma, artists and other entrepreneurship initiatives collapse owing to unfair practices, where other organizations take advantage of inventors' work and make duplications. This is despite the inventors having invested a considerable amount of money and time in developing innovative products. 1538. The Rural Energy Master Plan REMP aims at broadening modern energy access through the development of grid-connected solar and mini hydropower plants, installation of solar photovoltaic PV microgrids, solar home systems SHS, solar water pumping systems and biogas digester plants. 1541. The rapid development and adoption of ICTS has been transforming every sector of the Zimbabwean economy. The second quarter of 2019 show a high active mobile penetration rate of 84.8%, a high internet penetration rate of 57.2%, and a static fixed L density of 1.9%. To systematically exploit the potential of ICS for national development and transformation, the government of Zimbabwe is developing the Smart Zimbabwe 2030 Master Plan which is an all-inclusive guideline that clearly articulates how the country will develop, deploy and manage its across all sectors. The Smart Zimbabwe 2030 Master Plan and Implementation Strategy will be part of the National Infrastructure Master Plan. 1544. The Road Development Program, which commenced in 2018, will be sustained during 2020 with resources being set aside for the program, targeting the following. Dash dualization and upgrading of the Harabit Bridge Road, $1 billion. Dash ongoing upgrading works on trunk roads, $1.2 billion. Dash rehabilitation and maintenance of rural feeder roads through DDF, $120 million. Dash local authority roads, funded through Zinara, $510.8 million. 1546. A comprehensive public transport policy framework is required, along with a transparent partnership between central and local government and the private sector. Government has since introduced the urban mass transport system, initially targeted at urban areas, which has also been extended to other parts of the country. Government will deepen and fine-tune the system in order to bring sanity to the sector and meanwhile allocates $540 million as a subsidy to this public policy program. 1549. Government has made positive gains on some of its healthcare indicators over the recent past. For example, under 5 mortality has fallen from 98 per 1,000 live births in 2008 to 56 in 2016. Other areas relate Dash improvements in immunization with both DPT, diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus and measles reaching 90% and 95% respectively. Dash HIV incidence has fallen from 1 to 0.48, while prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV, PMTCT, comma, rate has fallen from above 30 to 5.7, among other achievements. 1552. 
this budget responds comprehensively to the plight of the girl child in enhancing their dignity. In anticipation of the finalization of the Education Act, the budget is required to have a provision for the supply of sanitary wear for female learners. Based on equity consideration, the proposal is to begin with rural primary and secondary learners from grade 4 to upper 6th form, and a provision of $200 million has been made under this budget. 1558. Based on the Auditor General's report, government is losing resources through corrupt activities. In addition, corruption in some parastatals and local authorities has compromised some desired development outcomes. There is a risk that some development partners may withhold funding for critical programs and or projects. Delays in taking remedial action against violations identified in audit reports has the unintended effects of propagating corrupt tendencies in the public service. To avert this risk, government from 2020 will focus on dash strengthening the internal control systems through among others, finalization of the establishment of the centralized internal audit unit. Dash developing and implementing a national anti-corruption strategy aligned with good practice principles with periodic monitoring and evaluation results. Dash enacting whistleblower legislation and protection in line with international best practices. Dash capacitating institutions established to combat corruption. Dash addressing conflict of interest issues, where government is both regulator and player. Furthermore, observations by the Auditor General will be pursued with a view of taking corrective measures. 1602. It is recommended that the pension preservation amount be reviewed from the current $600 to $6,000 in order to ensure that the amount preserved is decent enough to warrant payment of a deferred pension at retirement after meeting preservation expenses. It is further proposed that the minimum commutable pension be reviewed from $50 to $500 per month, in line with inflation developments in the economy. 1612. Mr. Speaker Sir, numerous incentives to support growth are already in place. These incentives cover productive sectors, which include agriculture, mining manufacturing and tourism, among others. The incentives have contributed to the restoration of production capacity and enhanced competitiveness of some industries. During the period 2011 to May 2019, revenue foregone as a result of tax incentives amounted to US $1.45 billion. 1614. In order to promote growth and formalization of small-scale manufacturers, I propose a duty refund facility, whereby small-scale furniture manufacturers pay duty on imported raw materials, which is claimable on a quarterly basis, with effect from 1st January, 2020, 1616. Notwithstanding the progress realized, there is need to further support the industry, to reach its full potential. I, therefore, propose the following incentives. 1616. Notwithstanding the progress realized, there is need to further support the industry, to reach its full potential. I, therefore, propose the following incentives. Dash extend rebate of duty on capital equipment imported by operators of hotels and lodges for a further three years, beginning 1 January, 2020. Dash extend suspension of duty on motor vehicles used by safari operators for game views and drives for 24 months, beginning 1 January, 2020. Dash introduce a suspension of duty facility to car hire companies for a period of 12 months beginning 1 January, 2020, subject to the following conditions extend the suspension of duty on the remaining vehicles used by tour operators for a further one year. 1631. I propose to review the tax-free threshold from ZWL $700 to ZWL $2.000 per month, and adjust the tax bands to begin at $2.001 and end at $50.000, above which the highest marginal tax rate of 40%, in line with economic developments, with effect from 1 January, 2020. I, further, propose to review the tax-free bonus from $1.000 to $5.000, with effect from 1 November, 2019. 
In order to safeguard the value of retrenchment packages, I propose to review the non-taxable portion of the retrenchment package from $10,000 to $50,000 or one-third of the package to maximum of $80,000. I propose to review the tax-free threshold from the current $20 to $100, and the maximum tax payable per transaction by corporates from the current $15,000 to $25,000 for transactions with values exceeding $1,250,000. For the avoidance of doubt, all bulk payments through mobile money banking platforms attract intermediated money transfer tax, except where such payments relate to remuneration. 1632. I propose to reduce the VAT standard rate from 15% to 14.5%, with effect from 1 January 2020, in order to stimulate aggregate demand. 1633. The monetary and fiscal reforms undertaken, if supported by increased domestic production, will clearly lay a firm foundation for sustainable and inclusive economic growth. In this regard, our thrust and priority for 2020 is centered on domestic production, productivity, and job creation, all leading to growth. While we are focusing on productivity and growth we are not lost to broader understanding of human and overall development, which to quote Martya Senator Philosopher, Nobel Memorial Prize in Economics and India Economist, he argues that human development is about expansion of citizens' capabilities to fend for themselves. 1635. Professor Cube has finished his presentation. That concludes our updates.